Before watching this video, you are advised to watch the video on marketization first as it will support your understanding of this topic. Please come back after watching the video. From 2010 to 2015, the UK formed a coalition government, headed by David Cameron of the Conservative Party and Nick Clegg of the Liberal Democrats. They were largely influenced by neoliberal and new right ideas. These ideas favoured marketization and privatization. As seen in the previous video on marketization, David Cameron expressed his desire to turn failing or coasting schools into academies, giving power to head teachers and teachers. From 2010 all schools were encouraged to leave local authority control and become academies. Funding was redirected to academies to use as they saw fit. By 2012, over half of all secondary schools had converted to academy status. I'd like every school to aim to be an academy because I want the power to be in the hands of the head teacher and the teachers rather than the bureaucrats. That, I think, is the vision for every great school, and I want every school in our country to be a great school. The focus of reducing social class inequality was lost under the coalition government as any school was given the opportunity to convert to academy status. Free schools, as discussed in the previous video, are schools set up and run by parents, teachers, faith organizations or businesses. They give parents and teachers the opportunity to create a new school if they are unhappy with the choice of schools in their local area. Critics however argue that these schools contribute towards social class inequality, due to its selection process, enrolling mainly middle class high ability students. This is evidenced by the low number of students on free school meals, which is an indication of a person's socio-economic status. Let's take a look at a piece Stephen Ball wrote for The Guardian in 2013. You can find the link to this article in the description bar.
Stephen Balls argues that the push towards academies and free schools has increased fragmentation and centralization of control over educational provisions. Coalition government also introduced free school meals and the pupil premium for students from deprived backgrounds to reduce inequality. However, Ofsted in 2012 found that it made very little difference to the students it was aimed at. The austerity program also meant that education had its funding slashed. Funding for buildings was slashed, Shore Start centers were closed, the education maintenance allowance was abolished and the university tuition fee increased by a third. These changes have affected disadvantaged groups considerably. The privatization of schools has also become a source of profit for capitalism. Stephen Balls calls it the education service industry. Private companies in the education service industry are given the autonomy to manage schools as they see fit. This can include building schools, providing supply teachers, an alternative curriculum such as a work-based learning, careers advice, Ofsted inspection services and running entire local authorities. It is much more profitable for the head teacher of a state comprehensive school to leave and set up a private sector education business, bidding for contracts to sell their services to the local authority. This has been regarded as highly controversial. The education service industry has also benefited from globalization. An example of this is the exam board, Edexcel, which is owned by the American publishing giant Pearsons. Educational software companies are also owned by global multinational companies. Conversely, UK educational policies have also been exported overseas. Stephen Ball refers to this as global educational policies. What is the colorization of schools? Ever noticed a vending machine on your school premises? Or a well-known brand or logo displayed at school? Well, this is known as the colorization of schools. A school that shows loyalty to a particular brand receives sponsorship. Privatization has become a key feature in shaping educational policies. It has made education a commodity that can be bought and sold in an education market. Functionalists, neoliberals and the new right agree that education must be meritocratic and promote social cohesion. However neoliberals and new right differ in that it can only be achieved through marketization, as the competition will raise the standard of education. Marketization has two parts, an internal market within the education system. This is where schools compete for pupils but are still under state control and the privatization of state education, where the state ceases to be the actual provider of educational services which is passed on to private companies. Policies aimed at gender equality particular in subject choice include gist and wise, to get girls involved in STEM subjects, a traditionally male subject. Policies aimed at closing the gap between ethnic groups and educational achievement include assimilation policies. Related policy is compensatory education programs such as Operation Head Start, aimed at tackling cultural deprivation. When I think about the history of Head Start, I really get very nostalgic because I remember the fervor that we felt that spring. We got word that this legislation had been passed, it was part of the war on poverty, and that we were going to have a role, we thought, in eradicating poverty. And we were going to start with very young children in a program called Head Start. The TV program Sesame Street was initially part of Head Start. Another is multicultural education policies to promote the achievements of BAME students and social inclusion policies which aim to provide an all-inclusive curriculum. These policies have been criticized on several grounds. 